So if you follow our channel, you know that we've had this Razor Blade 16 for about two weeks now. And I've loved this laptop so much, I've decided to make it my personal machine for 2023. So using this laptop every day, I've had a lot of hands-on time now with this machine. So in tonight's video, I wanna have a bit of a deep dive into this Razor Blade 16 to cover a lot of the areas that didn't quite fit into the actual review. We're gonna be undervolting and overclocking the CPU. We're gonna be checking out some power supplies and USB-C PD chargers, as well as also looking at Synapse in more detail, laptop stands, and external monitors. But before we start all that, here's a message from today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is Ugreen with their amazing range of power supplies and charging equipment. Like this Nexode 65 watt fast GAN charger. This 65 watt compact charger is smaller than say a MacBook Pro charger. It's got fold out plug sockets to make it even more compact when it's in your bag. And on the front, we've got two USB-C ports and a USB-A port. And just to show you how compact it is, here it is up against the Ugreen DigiNest 65 watt GAN charger. Now this one does have built-in AC outlets, but look at the size difference between these two, just to show you how compact this charger is. You can throw this in your bag and you won't even notice it's there, yet you can charge your MacBook Pro 14 in about an hour and a half through its 65 watt PD charging ability. Or you could use this to charge your iPad, your iPhone, and your MacBook all at the same time. And with Ugreen's thermal guard system, you know you can trust this device to charge your expensive tech purchases with its built-in thermal, over voltage, and short circuit protection. Check out the links in the description below for more information or to buy this device. Now back to the video. So I'm gonna start on probably the most requested feature, and that is the undervolting and the overclocking of this CPU. Now it's amazing news that Razer have used an i9-13950HX CPU and actually left it unlocked. And not only that, but they actually allow you to adjust it within Synapse itself, and that's a real first for Razer. Now, obviously, the advantage of doing overclocking within Synapse is that that's included free with your laptop, and it's all here ready to go. But the only downside with using Synapse for adjusting the CPU is it is very, very basic within their software, and also you need to be in the custom mode to use it. So this makes it basically useless if you want to be in balanced or the science profile within the laptop. And when I say basic, you're literally only getting access to just the wattage and the actual undervolt of the CPU. So with this in mind, for tonight's tweaking, I'm gonna be using Throttle Stop. Now this is a piece of software I've used for years. I love how customizable it is for your CPU, but also you can use Intel XTU, which has pretty much the same features, and it's just as good as Throttle Stop, but I'm just more familiar personally with Throttle Stop because I've always used it. So the main advantage to Throttle Stop on this actual Razor Blade 16, is not only can you use it in any of the profiles, so silenced, balanced, or any of the custom modes, but you get access to the undervolting, the actual TDP adjustment, the boost adjustment, and there's profiles and clock speed adjustment, all within this one handy piece of software. So when we're talking about actually tweaking the CPU in this laptop, the biggest change that you can make that makes a massive impact on this machine is actually undervolting. So that's what we're gonna quickly look at first. Now every CPU is going to be different, so your mileage may vary, but from my testing so far, I've got an easy minus 125 millivolt undervolt on the actual cache and the CPU of my machine. So whenever you make an adjustment to your undervolt and start carefully first, maybe start at 50 or 100 millivolts and work your way up, once you actually apply your undervolt, make sure you test your machine with either Cinebench R23 or you can use the throttle stop inbuilt tool to actually test for any errors. So once I tested and verified my CPU undervolt, which I probably could have gone further, but I was quite happy with 125 millivolts, the next thing to do is to run some benchmarks to see what difference it makes. And I was really impressed with the actual results here. By undervolting, you're getting exactly the same wattage cap on these systems, depending on the profile you're in, but it can boost higher per cap. So say for instance, you've got the 120 watt cap on the maximum performance mode, instead of maybe getting four gigahertz, you may get 4.5 gigahertz. So this essentially gives you free performance boost without creating any extra heat or noise within your system. So I tested Cinebench R23 against all of the profiles, and this made a massive difference in scores to each of these actual profiles themselves. Now this 13th generation CPU was already powerful, but in the Razer Blade, it can be slightly throttled down more than the Blade 18 or other bigger gaming laptops. But by undervolting, you can decrease that gap in performance between those bigger machines. Now I didn't have a great deal of luck by increasing the wattage to the CPU because I did find that the long-term boost of 120 watts was pretty much a healthy tipping point on this machine. If I increased that, then it started to throttle back with temperatures anyway. But I think 120 watts on this tiny slim light chassis is still quite impressive 
or with an undervolt, you get an amazing performance. But if you find that maybe that's too much, you want a quieter and cooler system, you can adjust the multipliers within throttle stop in any of the throttle stop profiles to decrease that further and therefore give you a cooler running system. Now I use the profiles in throttle stop to give me four very different CPU configurations and I'll drop the multipliers down in each of these profiles to go from the most powerful to the quietest system that I can get. And even in the quietest system mode, it's still incredibly powerful itself. So with the tweaking out of the way, I now wanna look at some power testing. Now this Razor Blade 16 in the higher end configurations comes with a 330 watt GAN charger. Now this is a very compact 330 watt power adapter, especially compared to some of its competitors, but it's still bigger than the 280 watt from last year's top end models. Now this is the 280 watt GAN power adapter. Whereas this one is a 230 watt non GAN charger. So you can see the old 230 watt is very similar to the 330 watt, but the 330 is the biggest. But the thing is, do you wanna be carrying this big 330 watt with you everywhere when you've got smaller power packs available? Maybe you've got an old Blade 15 or a Blade 14, and you've got an old power pack or two hanging around. I know I've got some in the office. So the first thing I wanted to do is test both of these older power adapters with this model. So I plugged both of the smaller power adapters into this Blade 16. When both of these are plugged in, it tells you that full power mode is not available with these chargers. Please supply more power. Now, basically what that means is it's gonna lock it into the balanced mode so it doesn't give you the custom mode available. So you can't put it in that high power mode. You're stuck into custom. But as custom is so usable on this laptop anyway, I don't think that's a problem. So that basically means when I'm out and about, I can take one of the smaller 280 or 230 watt power adapters in my laptop bag and have it in balanced mode, which is still plenty of performance. When I get back home into my office, I've got my bigger 330 watt plugged in at the desk. That's quite a nice useful feature. Now also Razer states that these laptops can use up to 100 watt PD charging. Now how usable is a laptop like this with 100 watt? Let's give it a try. So I got Ugreen's 100 watt multi-charger. Now if you plug in just one cable into USB-C, you get full 100 watts from this charger to the laptop. Now when I tested this, I was actually very impressed with the results. When running some of the game benchmarks, such as Time Spy, I could see that the system would allow 35 watts through to the CPU and 50 watts to the GPU. Now that doesn't sound a lot compared to how powerful this machine is, but it still gives you very playable performance. And on a USB-C adapter for a big laptop like this, I'm actually really impressed. And the scores it actually gives me beats out my Razer Blade 15 with 3070 Ti from only two years ago. And that's on a USB-C charger. And also it's much quieter and cooler using this little adapter. So having tested the 100 watt PD charging, I decided to try 65 watt to see how it would react. And it still does work with that 65 watt, you still get the message saying more power is required. But when I tried some gaming benchmarks, it really wasn't any fun. So again, running Time Spy, it was telling me to giving 20 watts to the CPU and up to 50 watts to that GPU. Although there it said that, it was very jittery with a lot of drops. So I don't think it was consistently supplying that wattage. And it gave me quite a low score, which is pretty much unusable for any kind of gaming other than maybe a 2D platform game. And another thing I noticed with the 60 watt charger is that when actually doing the game's benchmarks, it was actually draining the battery. So if you wanna use something like a 60 watt adapter for this laptop, it will be fine for a bit of light work or maybe some movie watching, but don't bother trying to use it for gaming. But the good news from this is, if you've got a Thunderbolt dock with a 100 watt PD or a monitor with a 100 watt PD, this laptop is really usable with just one cable. So for this next section, I wanna just quickly talk about some of the new changes in Synapse for this year. Now the biggest feature, which you probably have already heard about, is the battery health optimizer within Synapse. And this is something that is really, really gonna be useful for a lot of people, because one of the biggest problems from razor blades from years gone by is battery bloat. And that's very often from either overheating batteries or batteries that are left at 100% on mains whilst gaming constantly, which let's be honest, if you've got a gaming laptop, you're probably gonna be running it plugged in a lot of the time. So if you go into Synapse and go into the actual battery option now, you'll see that there's an actual health toggle that you can turn on or off. If you turn it off, the battery charges as normal up to 100%. But if you turn that on, you now get an option to get the battery to stop between 50 and 80%. So if like me, you're always gaming or using this laptop heavily on mains, turn that feature on and drop it down. Now I'm running mine at 60% and that stops that laptop being constantly charged up to 100 and damaging those cells. So hopefully with this thicker chassis and this new battery optimizer, hopefully these batteries won't swell like plenty of other Razor Blades 15s in days gone by. Another couple of nice useful features this year is that when you unplug the actual power adapter from this laptop, it'll automatically switch 
from 240 hertz in this model to 60 hertz to save you a bit of power on battery. That's a nice feature that we've been asking for for a long time. And also, we've got hotkeys within Synapse. The first one, you can toggle that frame rate, so you can toggle it back to 60 to 240 with a function in R, which is very handy. But you can also switch profiles in Synapse. This is a really nice feature. So if you're in silent or balance mode doing some work, and you want to then fire up a game on the performance mode, you can use an actual function key rather than having to open up Synapse, which is quite laborious. And the last little thing that I've noticed in Synapse this year, which is quite a nice little feature, is that now when there's a firmware or BIOS update for this laptop, it flashes up within Synapse. Now this is a real nice little feature because previously you never knew if there was an update for your machine. You'd have to go to Razer's website, find your laptop in the support, and see if there were any firmware updates for your machine. Now it actually pings up in Synapse and tells you and takes you to the page to download it. And talking of which, there has already been an update for this machine and the 18, which hopefully improves the actual screen flickering on the 18 and improves some of the touchpad issues on the 16 and the 18. So make sure you download that if you haven't already got it. Now for the penultimate section in this actual video, I want to quickly look about the actual thermals on this laptop very briefly. Now, with most gaming laptops from many years gone by, I've always elevated my laptop slightly, just raised the rear up to give a bit more airflow underneath to improve the actual temperatures. Because gaming laptops are always sitting very low to the desk and they do get hot. So being that I've got a Razer laptop, I normally use this Razer laptop stand. Now this is the V2 stand. It is expensive, but this one's got a built-in hub. So you've got a little USB-C cable that plugs into your Razer and all that basically does it gives you HDMI out, USB-C out, and a couple of USB ports, plus obviously the RGB light around the front. But this fits perfectly underneath your laptop to allow plenty of air underneath. Now this is expensive. You can just use a couple of coasters or anything just to lift your laptop up a little bit to produce the airflow. So when testing in this section, I use this, and I also went to Amazon because people are always asking me, should you use a laptop cooling pad? So I've bought one of the most highly recommended Laptop cooling pads on Amazon. This was really quite cheap, it was 20 quid. It's got three fans inside, which blows air directly into the laptop to see whether this is better than just lifting the laptop up or leaving it flat on the desk. So to actually test this, I used both Time Spy and Unigen Valley on this machine. So I got it very hot on both flat, raised, and on a cooling pad. I left it running for 10 minutes on each for running the benchmarks. And the results actually quite surprised me because Obviously expecting better results when I actually lift the rear of the laptop up, but I wasn't expecting as good a results as I got with this actual just laptop stand. Now the actual temperatures and the fan noise was pretty much the same as lying flat on the desk. And I thought that was unusual because obviously normally when you do lift them up, it does decrease the actual temperature. But instead what it's actually done is allowed the actual GPU and the CPU to boost for a little bit longer before throttling it back down a bit for temperatures leading to slightly higher scores in Time Spy and Valley. But then when I put it onto the actual cooling stand with the fans, this surprised me even more. Running those same benchmarks and tests, I actually got pretty much identical result to leaving it flat on the desk. Now I expected with that cold air pumping directly underneath that this would provide more airflow and therefore give me the best results of the three, but it actually didn't. Now when I looked underneath the actual razor blade stand, both those fan vents were either side of the actual pad giving me full access to the air into the back of the laptop. And I think even with this, the laptop is sitting so close to it, it doesn't work effectively. So as usual, my advice when gaming heavily on these laptops is just raise the rear a little bit. Get them slightly off the desk because they're always so low with those small rubble feet underneath. That will give you the biggest boost and the best temperatures on your laptop. Now before I call a close to this video, I've got one more little question that people keep asking me. I just wanted to quickly answer in this video. I've tested both the Thunderbolt 4 ports on either side of the laptop with my external monitor. I'm pleased to say that both of these are hardwired to the NVIDIA graphics card. So if you're using a G-Sync monitor or a FreeSync monitor, you can still use that G-Sync Advanced or G-Sync by using the Thunderbolt port on either side. So hopefully that's answered all your questions about the Razer Blade 16. If there's anything that I've missed or anything else that you think I should have added in this deep dive video tonight, please put it in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to answer. And as always, thank you for watching.